Hey giant pumpkin people, welcome back to the patch. Uh, today we're going to be planting our seedlings in the soil. Uh, going to go over some unexpected things that uh, you might be, not be aware of and challenges that you might face and how to fix it. And uh, we'll go ahead and get into it. All right guys, so this is uh, the hoop house I am using this year in this area. This is where the state fair plant is gonna go. Uh, this is on the east end of my patch um, and it's the easiest to access uh, from where I pull the pumpkins out of. So I typically make this my state fair patch. Um, we got a uh, three foot wide, uh, almost, I think it's five feet long. I think it's 71 inches. Um, so almost six feet long actually. And then uh, three feet tall. Uh, I've got a uh, vent system here uh, that's automatic, so once it gets up to, I think it's 90 degrees, it fully opens, or 95 degrees, if I'm not mistaken, it fully opens. Um, got a little hanging thermometer there at plant level, uh, tells me the current temperature and the minimum and the highest temperature uh, throughout the last 24 hours. So, pretty neat little gauge there, if you don't have one for your hoop houses, highly suggest it. It's, I believe by Accurate, um, it's on Amazon um, check them out and then uh, I did put a plant in uh, this is probably about five or ten days ago I can't remember um, and it's doing okay this plant was actually ahead of my current starts at that time it was a more of a test plant it's what I used in my uh, seed starting video uh, just to kind of get things rolling and I wanted to have something going before I did my start so I can make the video. Ended up throwing it in the soil because it was doing well and our temperatures uh, were doing pretty good around here. So it's doing okay. Nights were a little bit chilly but um, just not as uh, strong if I had soil cables or heat in there. So if you don't know, I don't have uh, electricity in my patch. I do use solar. So I got a solar panel here. And it runs on a fan just to kind of move air around and allow it to circulate and kind of give the plant, um, you know, that effect of a breeze without actually being exposed to the elements yet. Um, this is the plant start that's going to go in here. So this is probably the one I'll go with as long as it takes off like it should. Um, but we'll see. They'll battle each other out. And uh, we'll get into how I prep my soil and also things to look out for. So this area here, I actually had another plant uh, next to this one, and that was the other test plant I had going. Um, again, they were running ahead of the schedule and weather was good, but you notice it's bare. So the reason it's bare is because it had corn seed maggots. Um, if you're not familiar with them, uh, when your soil is cold and then starts to warm, uh, these maggots, uh, they're from a fly. Uh, they will burrow inside sprouted seedlings. Um, the reason they're called corn seed magnet, maggots is because farmers have to deal with them um, in cornfields. When their soil temperature changes, um, they, uh, their eggs hatch and then these maggots come out and they look for anything nearby. Uh, I believe it's the scent or the pheromone or whatever that comes off of seedlings. They, they just track them down and they destroy them. So, um, I'll post a picture here of what they look like and also the damage they did to this plant. Within two days, this plant was almost laying on the ground. So um, they work pretty quick. Um, once they're in there, that's it. They're, the plants are too small and, and there's nothing you can do. So kind of go over uh, how I treat for them and also um, how to prevent it from happening. So the first thing you can do to prevent it from happening is when you have your seedling um, about a week before you put it outside um, and you start introducing it and, and, and getting it ready, uh, you want to uh, treat it with a Merit product. It's a systemic insecticide. Um, it actually is inside the plant and uh, I use WP75, uh, uh, but again, M-E-R-I-T, Merit. Um, just find any products uh, that you can get with that. Uh, I can't remember the, the name of the chemical. I'll try and post it up here for you. But um, what it does is if anything chews on it, the worms, caterpillars, whatever, uh, maggots in this case, 
uh, it upsets it does something to their stomach or or whatnot and uh, they pretty much die pretty quick so they may do some chomping but it's uh, relatively short-lived um, but that's what I do with the plants when before they even hit the ground is I treat them with the the merit product so the second thing I do is I heat up my hoop houses. I like to heat them up for about three weeks. Uh, these have been heating up for I believe two. And if you can see, I get the temperature really hot. So um, the min max was 81 and 111. Um, that's not exactly accurate as far as the minimum because it reset probably around 11 o'clock. That's when those batteries um, were activated so that was the minimum at that time but what happens is it warms up the soil gets them active but there's no plants in there yet so i started that a couple weeks ago and there's nothing for them to eat they eventually die off and, and just die in the soil so that gets rid of the majority of them uh, the next thing i do is i'll get in here and after that time before i put the plants in I'll uh, dig up this soil. Now those maggots like to stay within about two inches of the top of that soil. So I'll go ahead and uh, mix up this soil about six inches down, maybe a little further, get it all mixed up. And then I treat it with a product called triazicide. Um, it works really good on grubs and, and uh, I believe it's, yeah, side web worms and, and different things above and below the soil. Um, so I utilize that. I used to use um, diatomaceous earth, and I still use that in, when it's dry. But if you use diatomaceous earth in your ground when you're about to plant, and you water it in, it's absolutely useless because um, the product itself has to be dry to be effective. Now, if it dries out, it will then become effective again. So there is some some use to it after, but usually around your plant, you're keeping it fairly moist. Um, for a while just to kind of ensure that the plant has everything it needs as it's growing so I don't use it around the plant like that I might use it as a topical or I'll throw it on the leaves but what I do use is seven dust um, so I use that for anything around or in the soil uh, this is effective um, the active ingredient is carbarail or whatever um, look at the product and uh, that works regardless if it's wet or dry. So that's what I do for that. Uh, just as a follow-up on the triazicide, I mix that uh, at the suggested rate for, I believe, cabbages and, and brassicas and things like that. Um, I mix it at three tablespoons per one gallon. And then I will, after I've gotten the soil loosened up, which I'll show you here in a minute, um, I'll get the soil loosened up. Uh, I'll get the plant hole ready. I'll end up planting the plant and then probably about a good six inch ring around the plant I'll water in that triazicide So like I explained earlier um, All I'm doing is loosening up that top six eight inches to disturb the eggs and the uh, corn seed maggots themselves make it uncomfortable for them now I'm using a new product that uh, I haven't used in the past. It's called Root Shield, and I'm also putting in mycorrhiza. Um, I use uh, Great White. Um, I don't know if it really matters um, as far as what products you use. I just prefer uh, Great White because uh, I've seen good results from it. I've also used RTI products, and um, I know Wallace Wow has some great products as well. Once I get the plant positioned where I want it, um, again, I'm trying to make some good root contact with those two products. And then I backfill, uh, making sure not to kind of crunch any roots or anything during that time period. Um, I know it's kind of self-explanatory, but I'm removing any uh, debris like organic matter, rocks, things like that, and cleaning off the leaves there. Once I've got that going, um, I use my triazicide, and with the triazicide, uh, I just put it in a ring around the plant, 
um, by doing that, it just d prevents uh, them from kind of crawling towards the plant. They hit that triazocide barrier. Um, then I put on that seven dust for top dressing, uh, just to make sure any flies uh, that might want to lay eggs or do different things, um, they get caught up by that seven dust. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's how I do it. Um, you know, you can see right here, this plant is a little bit ahead, a little bit duller in color, right? Because the nitrogen wasn't readily available, cooler days. Uh, probably could be hit with some calcium nitrate now, um, which I'll probably end up doing either today or tomorrow. But uh, I wanted to see if it was going to flop over like the other one did a couple days ago. So far, it's looking okay. This uh, leaf is still stiff. It's a little wrinkly, but it's still stiff. So it tells me that the vascular system is still okay. It's not been attacked. Um, so I'll uh, probably roll with that one as a backup. That one is my primary. Um, do what I normally do with my plants and go from there. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. I know it's uh, kind of simple as far as the process, but something that may be unexpected, especially for newer growers, having those corn seed maggots pop up. You know, I don't deal with them every year, but they pop up every now and again. And, you know, I didn't think about it when I threw them in the first time. So, you know, it hit me with the test plants. Luckily, it was the test plants. So we'll go ahead and wrap up this video here. Um, I got the rest of them to plant out. Uh, you know, this one's going to be the 1883 Bayouk, if I hadn't mentioned that. And uh, next one there is going to be the 2376 Bayouk. And they're going to run towards me this way. So that's going to be east. So I, I'm going to grow three plants growing east. And then um, in that hoop house, I'm growing them back to back. So one will grow east, and then the other one will grow west. Um, and that bigger hoop house is how I did it last year in both of these locations, but I wanted to try three eastern grown plants and then uh, the one back to back. Um, reason being, I want to see if the sun helps out with, uh, you know, speeding up that plant growth and, and pulling the, the uh, you know, grown main towards that way or if it doesn't make a difference. And then... Um, you know, I really like using the bigger hoop over there as far as being able to have two plants in one hoop. Uh, it's a little bit more convenient. Um, and then, uh, you know, I think just from a, a managing standpoint of the temperatures, having to manage one climate environment versus, you know, three or four, it, uh, it makes it a lot easier. So just a couple different ways to do it. Uh, I'll probably go over that in the next video of, of how they're doing and how I'm liking these little hoops uh, with the vent systems. Um, but we'll go over that next time. Uh, just want to thank you guys for watching and, uh, you know, choose Team Scott if you want to see a couple of 2,000 pound pumpkins in the patch come this fall. Thanks for watching. 1883 Bayouk, east side of the patch. 2376 Bayouk, center east side of the patch. 2376 Bayouk, west end of the patch. 1883 Bayouk, west side of the patch.